Hey Binanceians, Karis here from Binance Australia here to give you the market monthly update and my gosh, what a busy month it's been. Starting with the macro environment in Australia, this week the Reserve Bank Board raised the official rates to a 10 year high of 3.1%, the biggest lift in rates since the late 1980s. Inflation in Australia is just too high at the moment at 6.9% over the year to October. The global markets have a lot of influence in Australia and I will break that down in a second, but guys, strap in. Further increases in inflation are expected over the months ahead, with inflation forecast to peak at around 8% over the year to the December quarter. But why is this even happening? Well, we have strong domestic demand relative to the ability of the economy to meet that demand, so the number just keeps going up. The US macro environment is super confusing at the moment, with conflicting data depending on which measure you look at. I get clearer signals from my hinge dates at the moment, and guys, that is seriously saying something. Retail sales, construction, spending, capital good orders, export imports are all measured in nominal dollars, which haven't been adjusted for inflation. Only when you see the term real dollars have they been? And this seems to be confusing analysts when they're trying to compare the market from over a year ago. For example, Black Friday sales were at record highs, but rose compared to the prior two years at a slower pace than broad inflation. The real figures are generally more useful, so guys, be careful when you're comparing. The monthly inflation print for the US came in below expectations, which was one of the few times it has done over the past 18 months. The issue is, is that this is largely due to demand slowdown rather than supply improvements i.e. people aren't spending rather than the markets becoming more efficient. The yield curve in particular has been sending off warning signals for a likely 2023 recession and the Fed will likely continue to drain liquidity. In saying this, there is a lot of chatter on crypto Twitter around capitulation. Capitulation refers to the point when markets hit rock bottom and we can see key indicators telling us this. For example, we are back above the 200 day moving average for the S&P and there has been major tech layoffs pushing companies into efficiency mode. But again, these messages still sending me strong mixed signal vibes like, are you interested or, or not? It's been a tough year for all risk assets due to macro pressures, inflation rates, and now a possible recession risk. I think that we could all do with a break. We all know the disappointing news with FTX, so I won't go on about it. However, something to note is that this was not a failure of technology, it was a failure of individuals. FTX's collapse does not mark the end of the digital asset industry. When your parents or your tried by friends say this, remind them of the financial services and energy industry that survived the collapse of, I don't know, Enron, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, Matter of Investment Securities, MF Global, you get the picture. As a result, Bitcoin has been in a holding pattern at around $17,000 US since mid-November. Sometimes a little bit above, sometimes below. One thing that is notable is the number of on-chain users went up significantly. If you want to learn more about storing your crypto in a cold wallet, check out our YouTube video for more. The other news taking headlines is Genesis, a centralized lending platform and a subsidiary of digital currency group DCG. They recently halted withdrawals, which subsequently led Gemini to halt withdrawals for its earned program on the same day. The contagion of Luna, Celsius 3AC, and now FTX is still being felt. In other news, Jack Dorsey's Bitcoin initiative cancelled its plans to trademark Web5. Brazil passed law to legalize cryptocurrencies as a main payment in the country. Fintech Unicorn Stripe partnered with Web3 companies, including Magic Eden, to integrate its fiat to crypto on-ramp solutions. Nike sprints into Web3 with its new Dot Swoosh platform. The footwear giant's latest Web3 will allow community members to create and trade their own digital collectibles, and Binance NFT Marketplace integrates with OpenSea. In more important news, Binance Australia hit 1 million customers this week. We wouldn't be here without all of you. So thank you so much. And here's to the next million.